So crypto is heating back up again with Bitcoin breaking resistance levels of $51,000. Ethereum just $400 away from its previous all-time high of back at $4,400. In this video, we're going to be going over some of the reasons why Bitcoin and cryptocurrency recently start to pick up on this Friday. We're also going to be talking about some very important key dates that you need to know as an investor so you can find yourself maximizing the volatility in this market to make money as a trader and at the end of the video we're also going to be going over some strategies in order to maximize the profit and also talk about some few reasons why we are just getting started and this is super super exciting to see if you are new to the channel though welcome consider subscribing if you guys enjoy this digestible crypto content and if you guys have been following along for the past few months and you have been enjoying those gains do me a favor and drop a like down below on this video so we can help out other people getting into the world of crypto as well so the global crypto market cap for today this is huge. We're at $2.30 trillion or an increase of 2.70% over the last day. Bitcoin's dominance is currently sliding a bit down. We're now nearing 41%, a decrease of 0.27% over the last day. And this is just because of all the volume that we're seeing with other cryptocurrencies. And if we just take the top two big boys in the market, as an example, you'll notice that Bitcoin in comparison to Ethereum, although it's making extra progress, Ethereum is still up 22% in the last seven days while Bitcoin is up 5%. So on top of that, Cardano recently broke $3 as well. This happened yesterday. And although we were anticipating for this to happen, we didn't think it would happen this quick. At least I didn't. So it's really great that we're seeing a lot of these altcoins pick up. And on the fact that we're seeing Bitcoin and Ethereum lighting up again, we should begin to see more movement into major altcoins very, very soon. Going into the last 24 hours, Solana is ripping once again. In the last week, they're up 70%. And in the last 24 hours, they're up nearly 20% in the market alongside near protocol up 17% Revain up 121% in the last seven days and up 17% today. Audius is having another kickback, another return as well of 14% with Avalanche also topping it up at 10.99%. So most recent news with cryptocurrency, DeFi giant Uniswap is actually under an SEC investigation. Now, this is good news and bad news. First of all, this is good news because this hasn't really affected the momentum of the rally at all. Normally in a more sensitive market, uh, anytime we did get SEC investigations, it would normally deter people from wanting to invest into crypto more. But I believe even with us seeing these type of headlines and the fact that literally the price of Bitcoin and Ethereum has rallied even harder today is a sure fire sign that all the momentum in the price action that we're seeing in this rally right now is legit. Now, on the other end of that, we have seen before in the past when the SEC gets involved with cryptocurrencies, like as an example, XRP, the price of that crypto ends up getting stunted. So Uniswap right now isn't getting that complete effect right now either, but this could just be the beginning of how much the SEC wants to limit and regulate other DeFi protocols and other cryptocurrencies in the space. Now, because this is the beginning of of an active investigation. We're not going to get too much details on the case right now, but I do know that Uniswap has been preparing for moments like this beforehand. And right now, because of the overall state of the crypto market, where we're seeing an overall amount of greed, I believe right now, even with news like this, it's not going to stop the rally that we've had over the past few weeks. So one interesting report that I wanted to talk about in this video was the August jobs report that came out today. Now, this article explains it the best, so I'm going to read it here and and I want you guys to pay close attention. The U.S. jobs rose by 235,000 in August, far below the consensus estimate for a gain of 725,000 jobs, the Labor Department reported today. The Bitcoin price rose 1.3% after the 8.30 a.m. ET report, pushing the largest cryptocurrency to a three and a half month high of about $50,700. Although one month's data isn't by itself predictive of the course of the economy, the report may reinforce the idea Idea that macroeconomic uncertainty caused by the Delta variant of COVID will cause the U.S. Federal Reserve to delay winding down its stimulus program of purchasing $120 billion a month in bonds. Now, this is related to all the talks with quantitative easing, tapering that you may have heard about in the news. Oh, well, it looks like they stated here. Many cryptocurrency investors speculate that the central bank stimulus program, which is also known as quantitative easing or QE, could weaken the dollar, pushing up the value of Bitcoin 
Bitcoin, which has a capped supply. Bitcoin is also seen on Wall Street as a speculative asset, and the bet is that more investors will be forced to seek such investments as QE suppresses returns in traditional bond markets. Major job losses occurred in the retail and restaurant industries, losing 29,000 and 42,000 jobs respectively. If you guys know anyone who owns a restaurant or if you have friends and family just in the industry, you may know that a lot of these places are looking to hire people because they just simply cannot get enough workers even during this time. At the bottom of this article, they also state, we believe the crypto market could be vulnerable on a short-term basis to any risk-off reactions to the US job reports. Attaching price movements of any asset to mainstream economic indicators has been much more difficult during the pandemic. However, I think these correlations are just starting to kick in, but they are not strong yet. I think they will get stronger and stronger as institutions enter the market. So in one of our last videos, we actually talked more about how much institutional demand is going into the crypto market right now. So I think it's safe to say that there is significance between the US job reports and what people do with their money, thus pushing up the price of different assets like cryptocurrency. So in order to better prepare for the future, I think it's so important to know the key dates on when these type of reports come out. So if you guys want to save this or screenshot this, it'll definitely give you a better idea on some of those important dates coming up. Friday, September 3rd, which is today, we got the employment situation report coming out. We also have real earnings coming out September 14th and then August 27th, the strike report. You also have October 8th, November 5th, December 3rd as some other additional important dates to know. Now, in addition to that, I believe the FOMC or the Federal Open Market Committee dates are going to be really important to know alongside cryptocurrency. So notice on March 17th to 18th, just a few days after the reports came out, we see the price of Bitcoin plummeting back down. On April 27th to 28th, we then experienced a bit more volatility with crypto where before it was descending, we had a little jump back up in price. Now, June 15th and June 16th, we actually saw the price of crypto going down after the report came out. Now, July 27th to 28th, this is when crypto was peaking up before a few days after that, it decided to reset in price like we've seen before back in May or April, and then we had another explosion back up. Now, although these specific dates can't necessarily tell us what crypto is going to do exactly, we can expect to see a lot of volatility even following just a few days after. So this is why additional dates coming up like September 21st to September 22nd for the next FOMC meeting with Jerome Powell is going to be important, not just for the stock market, but we're also seeing the latter of the crypto market being affected as well. Now, on top of that, futures have been a significant part in helping the price of Bitcoin or watching it fall. So we get more data on this towards the end of the month when these dates actually come close. But you'll notice that the settlement dates for the next few months for the contracts with futures and options expiring are going to be September 27th. And then it's pretty much the end or the beginning of the next few months for November 1st, November 29th, January 3rd, January 31st. And these are going to be those dates that you do need to keep an eye out for, which is going to be a time where you can either consider entering those positions if a lot of options are expiring in the money, or you can consider liquidating, taking those profits out, expecting another volatility turn for the bearish side. Now, if we zoom back in and take a closer look at the calendar, especially within the last few weeks, you'll notice that on particular days like Friday, we've been setting an average of over 5% gained on the day. So today's another Friday. It's hard to say if there is a direct correlation with independent variables going on in the world, but based on history and repetition within at least the past four to five weeks, it has been clear Fridays have been a great day for the market, and that's when we see the prices go up. And then usually by Sunday is where we make it or break it, where last week we saw the price of crypto going back down. But even in weeks prior to that, we saw the major liftoff, which has helped us get from the $30,000 range all the way to where we're at now, just under 51 k now, right now, I believe we are still very early with crypto. And if you are a new investor that still has money sitting on the sideline and you've been deciding, hey, I don't know if I want to get in still just because of how the last market felt before we saw the collapse in May. If we take a look at Google Trends and just see how much activity is going into this, we are nowhere near the previous peak or the top of the market. When Bitcoin was at its previous all-time high back in May, the interest during that time was at 100. But even right now, with the price of Bitcoin slowly breaking 51K, 
today with new uh, target levels of fifty-seven dollars to fifty-eight thousand dollars now. I mean, even the mainstream media folks just haven't picked this up fully yet. So Bitcoin's at a thirty-two right now with the interest. Institutional and retail demand is starting to pick back up. But right now, I am super bullish on crypto just because I know we're nowhere near the top right now, and we have all this money that was prepping up, that was getting saved, that was ready to get put into some of these assets. So as soon as you hear some of your other co-workers who know nothing about investing starting to talk about crypto, that's when you can imagine we're getting to the peak. But right now, I just know that people are still rediscovering it or finding their confidence. And I think it's going to take a few more weeks for us to even get to those levels where we could say, hey, maybe now we're approaching some of those new all-time highs. But I believe even at that point, if this bull market continues to ride up, we still have a strong chance of going all the way till the end of the year. And just imagine how much progress we can make till then. A $75,000 to $100,000 Bitcoin is still not out of the picture. So in order to maximize your profits with cryptocurrency during this time, what I would recommend you to do is to have an exit strategy in place beforehand. Now for me, I'm more of a hodler. I'm more of an investor who likes to enter positions when I see numbers hitting a certain threshold of my buy limit. So I've done that multiple amount of times and that has reaped me the most amount of significant rewards over the past few months, even comparison to if I were to actively trade. Now, yes, I would have made more profit in this market if I was magically able to time the top before we had the reset and then being able to re-enter the market at its bottom. So it's not even just exiting your position. It's being able to re-enter when you do experience that cool down, which is really, really hard to get. I know many new investors who get into the space are often thinking that you just have to time the exit best once, but you have to think about what you're going to do with that money. Once you're able to secure, say, $10,000 in profit in crypto, are you just going to spend it all on items or are you going to try to reinvest that so you can continue making money in the market that we are in today? So that's going to have to result in you entering the market more than once. So selling it and then knowing when to re-enter those positions to climb back up, to continue recycling that money so you can stay profitable as an investor over time. Now, instead of going through all that headache, what I do is to just dollar cost average slowly. And whenever I see larger dips in the market or those red days, that's when I say, okay, let me click some more orders in. Let me put a little bit more money than I usually do. But if you know that crypto is going in a great place long-term, that we're going to be in a higher place one, two, five, 10 years from now, just averaging and slowly and going up with the growth is going to reduce the amount of risk where you can lose money in the market and find yourself maximizing that reward. You're asking the question, is it too late right now? Should I be investing? I would say, no, it is not too late through my non-financial advice. And right now, Bitcoin is still nowhere near $65,000. We still got a long ways to go. And once we hit that, who knows how much we're going to go up this year. So I am just really excited. And I know right now, even from the statistics that YouTube is giving me, we're not seeing the same amount of attention that we had from the mass public back during the peak in May. So before we even get there, make sure that you are able to load up on those positions with cryptocurrency and make sure you're putting in money that you can afford to lose. So in case Bitcoin does go down, you're not going to be stressed. You're not going to be losing sleep about it overnight. Start slow with your investment and then over time, as it continues to grow and you find more confidence as an investor, that's when you can start piling back in. You don't have to shoot for the stars and go for a 10,000 X percent return by the end of this year. If you're still able to double or triple your money, a lot of people are gonna be pretty happy with that. All right, so that was today's video as an update. Guys, keep an eye out for some of those key dates. I know it takes a little bit more time, a little bit more research, but all you have to do is maybe put in your Google calendar or if you have like a physical planner, just mark it in there. Like these are more significant dates that are coming up because anytime we've experienced jobs reports or talking about how we're going to start getting some tapering soon, that's when we see some type of volatility, whether it's in the green or in the red a few days after, or even same day, we always experience volatility in the market, which is going to have either more opportunities for you, or it's going to save you money because you can take those profits off. Now, guys, I really appreciate you watching this video all the way till the end. Now, because this is the beginning of a brand new month and 
You guys have been asking me all the time. Brian, when are you going to open some more additional spots for Inner Circle? I will open those now. You guys can check out the group for about a month. Patreon charges at the end or beginning of the next month. So you can actually join the group. And if you don't like it, you could unsubscribe or even just cancel your membership before they even charge you. But I would love to have you in the group. So I'm going to open up over 100, maybe 200 spots. If you are able to secure a spot for Inner Circle and our Patreon, you will have full access to my own personal portfolio. See exactly which cryptocurrencies I am holding and the percentages for it. And on top of that, you're going to get my watch list, my buy and sell orders, and you're going to have a great community. And also these weekly live streams we've been doing every Wednesday where I answer your specific questions and just go over more in depth about some of those secret cryptocurrencies that I've been catching an eye out on that we've been making some tremendous gains for our group. Now, guys, if you did enjoy this video, don't forget to comment down below the secret phrase word. That's going to be a uh, remote control. Comment that down below if you guys are watching this all the way till the very end. Don't forget to check out the links down below in the description. BlockFi, you can earn additional interest when you store your cryptocurrency with them. You can also buy and sell cryptocurrencies and stocks with Webull. If you use my link, you'll get two free stocks as well. And on top of that, don't forget to check out a VPN. That is very important. Surfshark, using my link, 30-day free trial, and you'll get 83% off and three months free. If you have also not yet followed me over on Instagram, I've been posting there more consistently. So go ahead, drop me a follow there. You will probably get some scam accounts following you there, just FYI, just a notice. So please don't get scammed by anyone impersonating my account. My official Instagram is linked down below in the description. I don't have any other backup accounts. I don't have any like secret trading accounts. Those are all scams. Watch out for it, but go ahead and follow me if you want to stay more up to date with my content. Once again, thank you all so much again for watching today's video. Have an amazing weekend and I'll talk to y'all soon. Peace.